Hi, Sarah here. What is it we say? A change is as good as a holiday. Well, I'm sure we all feel like a holiday right now. So I decided to have a little change. I'm packing my backpack with all the things I need. And I'm going to do my air dry clay project out in the fresh air. So come and join me. I've packed my stone coloured air dry clay and it feels like a little bit of a challenge going out. It's quite windy here today and so we'll see how the air dry clay holds up. I'm going to make a really simple pinch pot vase and I'm sure you'll love the technique and I'd love it if you give it a go too. You can make your vase absolutely any size you like but I have a one kilogram pack of dust clay here and I'm simply going to cut it in half and so use 500 grams of this. And straight out of the packet, the air dry clay should be nice and soft and easy to use. Cut your section of clay evenly in half and pop one half of it back in the packet and set it aside just to use a little bit later. Rather than actually kneading the clay, if you just bang it and tap it on the side like this, you want to form a nice little ball. As I said earlier, this is the stone coloured clay, so it's really quite dark when it's wet, but it will dry to a nice stone colour. Get yourself a little bowl and pour out some of the water. Any cracks and splits can be just smoothed over like this with your thumb. If you feel you need to, you can add just a little bit of water to your fingers, but we really don't want to add too much. Once you have a neat ball shape, take your thumb and you want to insert it into the top two thirds of the way down. Using two or three fingers, you want to have that pinching motion to pinch around the pot and smooth out any little bits as you go, just like that too. So two or three fingers, you want to go in and we're going to try and form a half sphere here. So keep fixing any cracks that appear as well as you go as that will make it easier as we go along. I can just add a little tiny bit of water to my fingers because as I'm outside it seems to be drying quite a bit quicker than when I'm inside. And so do you see the motion, you're just going round and round, spin it round, you can do it nice and slowly, nice and gently, using your fingers to really form a half sphere shape, a hemisphere. Just keep checking that you're happy with the shape and keep going nice and gently around. The walls of this are fairly thick. You can go slightly thinner, but as a beginner, it's easier to do them a bit thicker so we've got a little bit more structure to work with. This wind really is drying out my clay a little bit more than it normally would inside and so I do have sympathy for those of you that live in a hot climate and struggle to keep the clay soft as you work with it. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of water onto my fingers, I'm not drenching it at all, I'm just adding a little on my fingers just to keep the air dry clay a little more moist. I'm really happy with the shape of that now and so I've got a little plastic bag that I'm just going to cover that over with while I work on the second one. And so we just keep that, the air getting to it, and that will be fine in a few moments. And we're going to take our second piece of clay and do exactly the same with that. And it's beautiful day today, just a little bit windy. And so I've done a second one there. You do want to make sure you've got the same circumference on both. I'm happy they are the same size and so it's time to attach the two of them together. I just take a little sharp tool and score the edge of both of these. This will help the two sides to attach together more securely. As I feel the edges of this are a little bit dry because of the wind, I've added a little bit of water, but you don't really need to add the water if you've got your nice smooth clay still. It should just grip and attach together. So I think the water has just made it a little bit slippy. And so I wouldn't recommend adding the water unless you absolutely feel you need to. Because the idea here is we're going to blend these sides together. And so 
as I've added the water, I've had a second thought. I'm going to take them back apart and we're just going to quickly add some slip as the glue in between these two. So it depends if you feel your clay is still lovely and soft, they should grip together. But if they don't, this is the next step. Just get a little bit of slip between your um, pieces there and that will add as a little bit of glue and we should now be able to blend these together. So they should just pull together like this and I like to do it with a knife. You can do it with your finger or you can do it with um, another flat item but we're simply just going to, I've got really dirty hands here from that slip, that's the bit of a disadvantage from me bringing my backpack and not being able to just go in and wash my hands. But hey, um, So you just want to bridge that gap and we want to pull some clay over from the one side to the other and then we'll do the same and bring the clay from the other side to the other side so that it's a bit of a jigsaw of um, a blending together there. As you get quite a good section of it done, it really starts to hold it together and you're able to hold it that bit easier. So as we say, just blend it from one side to the other and if you get a few little gaps like this, you can either add another little bit of clay in, a clay coil in there or as I've done then, just add some little bits of slip and keep blending away. It does take quite a while this process but um, just keep going. I just went there to wipe my hands with some wipes just because I was struggling there with too much slip all over my hands. But um, it, as I say, it takes a little bit of time. You just want to keep blending back and forth and black, back and forth. You can use an old credit card because you can get a little bit of a bend on it there and really blend that round. And when little cracks you might have, just add a little bit of the slip and really blend that over. And as you can see, we've got a pocket of air on the inside and that's holding our form together. If you need to, just add a really tiny bit of water to stop it drying out as we do it. Because really take your time and really enjoy the process and we've got a little pocket ball of air there and it's looking really quite cute. For the opening at the top take a lid or something as a guide and then we want to cut this out. I actually have here a paper clip which I have unwound and I'm simply going to slide this around and cut around my circular mark and pull that out. And you can see the clay still here is fairly thick, which is quite good and it gives us a nice sturdy shape. I'm simply going to smooth that over and give it a lovely shape. You can go on and add a neck to the vase or you can pull it up and make a little extra lip on the vase. You just pull and push your finger and pull a little bit of this up to make a little rim if you want to. But as I say, I'm just going to leave this one really nice and simple today. Smooth it out completely and then we're ready to leave it to dry. So I've just carried mine home on my tile and packed my backpack and I've brought it home back to my studio. And so I'll let it sit there and let it dry nice and slowly. It will take quite a while as it's fairly thick and it will flatten slightly at the bottom. So every now and again, you can give it a gentle little roll round so that you get your nice rounder base because it's quite heavy and that sort of pulls it down. I made these other two in white clay and pulled up a rim on the edge here just by simply pulling around and getting a lip on there like that. They're a little bit rough on the edges these ones, I didn't smooth them down too much but um, we can get a little bit of sandpaper to them and we can make them a little smoother if we want to because they equally look nice like this. Our little vase has now dried to a nice stone colour and we can give them a really light sand with some really fine sandpaper. And I'm going to do this with two white ones as well. And then you can go ahead and either seal them first or you can acrylic paint them straight away. And I've got another little technique that I'll show you in my next video which I'm sure you'll also enjoy. 
and I'm going to do this on this little pinch pot vase as well. So thank you for watching and I hope you come and see some more soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.